Hi everybody, it's Woody. I'm back and I'm continuing my discussion of Andy Davis's article, Shearwater Dive Computer Settings Become a Power User. Step by step, video by video, I'm just simply using his amazing article to video discuss his article. And really I'm video reading his article mostly. All the credit goes to him. I just love it so much I wanted to put out a video on it. Okay, here we go. We're on the next phase. It is Shearwater Dive Computer Settings and Bowman ZHL16C. Now listen, Shearwater uses this Bowman model. What is that? It's simply a mathematical algorithm to calculate your bottom time and ascent to avoid decompression sickness. How does it work? He goes on to talk about it works by it estimates how quickly nitrogen is absorbed into your body and how quickly it's removed on ascent. Right? That's it. It simply is trying to keep you safe to balance this prefer pressure differential that I talked about. We have to come up obviously to get back to the surface, but we also have to come up to get the nitrogen out of your solution. But we have to come up at the right rate so that it doesn't come out too quickly, form big bubbles, and you get bent. So it's a balance. I got to come up. I got to get up. But if I go too quickly, the bubbles are going to basically be too big and I get bent. Okay. That's what we're the whole entire giant discussion in the world about all this stuff is, is ascending. Ascent. At what ascent rate can I come up? So, we have this model, and the model needs some flexibility to enable different levels of conservatism. And that is what gradient factors provide. They give you that flexibility on shearwater computers. You can basically change the gradient factors, change the conservative setting in your shearwater computer. Now, gradient factor, it refers to the pressure gradient between the surrounding pressure on your body and the pressure of the nitrogen inside your body. It's a scientific way, a fancy way, I love this is from him, of saying pressure difference. That's it. It's the difference between the pressure outside your body and the pressure of the nitrogen inside your body. So anytime you hear this, this fancy word of gradient factor, simply understand that it's just talking about controlling the pressure difference to prevent bubble formation and allow nitrogen to enter or exit your body. That's it. And it's going to get even simpler in this explanation that he makes. I love this. All right. Easy to understand. There are two numbers to modify in the gradient factor, okay? We have a gradient factor high number and a gradient factor low number. <clears throat> what are they? What's the gradient factor high number? That's the overall level of conservatism. That is the number of how conservative you want to be. How close to the maximum M value, to the maximum amount of bubbles compressed into your 16 tissue compartments that you can handle and still be able to get to the surface without getting bent. Do you want to be at the absolute maximum that this model says that you can be at? I mean, that would be like for a perfect Navy SEAL, 20 years old. I don't. So we change that high gradient factor to set the level of conservatism. The low gradient factor, much harder to understand, but it sets the depth of the first deco stop. That's going to be a different discussion, a separate video from this one. 
Now, you can ignore the gradient factor low unless you're a technical diver planning decompression dives or, and he later goes on to say this, if you have to make an emergency decompression stop. You're a recreational diver and you blew it, man. You didn't follow your dive computer and now you're in deco. You're no longer able to go directly to the surface without stopping. You have to stop or you're going to get bent. Now that low factor could apply to you. Okay. So let me show you what it looks like. He does a great job of that. And I'm going to try to show you this in this picture. Okay. So, oh, here we go. Give me a second. You're seeing me live in progress, which is totally cool, my style. And I'm going to show you the two numbers that you're going to be affecting on your computer. So you can see that little illustration there. You have a gradient factor low and a gradient factor high. Very easy to set and change in your Shearwater Dive computer. Right, I'm not going to go through all the settings. This is more, a little bit I am, a little bit I'm going to go through the discussions of how to change those settings, but this is more about what all this stuff means. Gradient factor high is what we're talking about now. The overall level of conservatism in your Shearwater computer. Now understand that the Bowman model itself, right? The Bowman ZHL16C has zero conservatism built in. So it's saying, hey, this is the maximum that you can handle. You are at a zero level of conservatism below the maximum that you can handle, the maximum amount of time that you can be at a certain depth before going to the surface. So it calculates to avoid pressure difference that causes these large harmful bubbles. Remember, it's totally focused on large bubbles, not tiny micro bubbles. The maximum safe pressure difference is called the M value. Okay, so gradient factor high is 100% is the M value. So if you have that, if you have that gradient factor set to 100%, you have no conservatism built in. Pretty risky. You are at the M value at that point, the maximum amount of gradient change in pressure that your body can handle to release these bubbles. You're at the maximum from these 16 theoretical tissue compartments. Don't be at that. You're probably going to get bent. Okay, so we don't want to do that. It's 0% conservatism if you set your high number to 100%. Now, um, you need to reduce it below that, okay? So, you want to reduce it by changing that number down, right? So, let's look at this. This is a great illustration. Great illustration. I'm going to turn the camera, and you can see. What he's saying there is that, look, that gradient factor high determines your level of conservatism. So if it's at 85, you are 15% below the M value. You have 15% conservatism. If you add it at 70, you're 30% below the conservative, 30% conservative, right? So the lower the number, the more conservative you are which is further insulation from getting bent. Easy to understand. Now, as you lower that high number, you are going to shorten your dive time and you're going to increase your insulation from the risk of DCS. It's going to shorten your dive time because it's basically going to... Um, keep you from getting more bubbles, keep those bubbles away from, from, from reaching the M value, the maximum amount of bubbles that you can take. 
So if you set your gradient factor to 70%, you have even a shorter bottom time than you would at 85%, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay. Gradient factor low is the next video. A little trickier to understand. It takes me a while to get my mind around it. This one was all about gradient factor high. I keep mine at 70%, everybody. I don't go above 70%. I want to have 30% conservatism built in. I'm 30% away from that maximum amount of bubble formation that theoretically I could handle before going to the surface. Gradient factor low is next. Tune in.